This lesson is about generalizing with variables, and it goes along with CPM Chapter 4, Section 1, and really Lessons 2 and 3. The way that we looked at this lesson is we started with a pool, and that pool in this case is a 3x3 three three pool, and we were looking to figure out how we wanted to put a border around it. And, or we also used a pool that was 5x5, five and still looking at the border around that. So to see if we can come up with an expression that we can use for in both cases to determine the total number of tiles, in this case the orange tiles, to surround the pool. And we were able to look at that a couple of different ways. Here's one student example. The way that the student looked at it with the 5x5 five five pool is that they said, I know that each length is going to be 5, and there are four lengths on the side, and then there are the four corners as well. And the way you could write an expression for this one, or for this model, is that you have five, and you multiply it by four, because remember you have four sides on the square, and then you're adding four for each of the corners. Okay? What we wanted to do then is, after we figure out how many uh, tiles we would need, uh, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 4 gives you 24 tiles, is to generalize that and say, how can we come up with an expression that we're going to use every single time? And in this case, we're going to use the variable r to represent the length of the side of a pool. Okay. So what we can do here is we can take the initial equation that we have and we can turn that into an expression. Instead of having 5, we're going to use r because r represents the length of the pool side. Because it's a square pool, we're still going to have four sides and we're still going to be adding in those four corners at the end according to the way that this pattern was solved. And then we can simplify it more, uh, which really doesn't have a lot to simplify, but I prefer to write 4r, using 4 as a coefficient with r being the variable, and adding 4. And then we're able to work through it that way. Another common way that students looked at this is they said, I'm going to measure the length of one side, and I know that one side needs to be the same as the other side. And they marked the inside to represent tiles that they've already purchased, and then identified, oh look, there's still three more in between. Okay, I'm not going to count this tile here, or this tile here, or the other corner tiles, because I've already purchased those tiles and I only need to do it once. Okay? If we use the variable r, again, to represent the length of the pool, and really it's the side of the pool, uh, one side, recognizing that it's a square, we're able to create another equation and then turn it into an expression. In this case, we did 5 times 2 plus 3 times 2. And we don't need to worry about adding in the corners anymore because that's already been included. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 2 is 6, which gives us 16 tiles. Now, can we do the same thing that we did before to create an expression? Yes, but we need to change it a little bit. Okay, let's start with the threes. And the reason I want us to start there is because the length of the pool is three. And so we're going to remember that r represents the length of the pool. So in our expression that we're writing, we're still going to be adding, but instead of adding three, we're going to be adding r because r is the length of the pool. And we still have two times that that shows up. But now I want us to look at the five. Okay. What we can do here is we can say we have that length of the pool still, but we're going to add 2 to it. So what we're really saying here is we have 2 times r, which is in this case is 3, plus 2. And the way that that works is, r, remember that r is 3, and 3 plus 2 gives us r5, and then we have that on the left side and on the right side. Okay. We're able to use our distributive property here to work it out. So then we find that we have 2r plus 4 plus 2r once again. And then we can simplify that down even more and combine our 2r's to see that we have 4r 
plus 4. Now let's look at those two expressions really quickly. For both of them, we were able to get 4r plus 4. But for the second one, we first had 2r plus 2 times the sum of r and 2. The reason that we get 4r for both is because these are called equivalent expressions. That means that if I have 4r and 4, it's the same thing as 2r plus 2 times the sum of r and 2. It doesn't look the same, but as we went through it last time, you can see that we can simplify and use the, use the distributive property to help us to get the same solution, where we end up with 4r plus 4 and 4r plus 4. Okay. For this problem, we're using the length of the pool to be our r value. We could change the expression if we change the problem and start with our tiles and want to find the area of the pool. Okay. In this case, we can use the same e e expression or equivalent expressions to find the solution for both figures because our variable is changing. We're using that same expression again because the shape is the same and we're solving the same problem but with a different value for the variable.